Yeah, back on the Sportsman Zone, let's switch the focus to football now. Sunday's climax to the 2023-24 Jamaica Premier League season has been hailed a success. Now, close to 20,000 fans piled into the National Stadium in Kingston to witness Cavalier beating Mount Pleasant 4-3 on penalties to win their third top division title in the country. However, many of the patrons and television viewers were left scratching their heads after noticing a number of additional markings on the playing area. Now, as you'll probably see and you definitely saw on Sunday, now smaller playing surfaces were marked out to accommodate a corporate event on the previous day. Many saw it as embarrassing that this happened on the country's premier football surface and for the final of the country's premier football competition. So what really went down? Let's find out from Major Desmond Brown. He is General Manager of Independence Park Limited, the operators of the National Stadium Complex. Major Brown, it's a pleasure to have you on the Sports Bank Zone, unfortunately under these circumstances, but you are usually quite candid with these issues, and I suspect you will be that today as well. So what can you tell us about what happened on Sunday that led to those additional markings on the stadium surface? Well, first of all, I'd just like to congratulate the, PF, the, the, the Premier League because I think it's a good start. Um, we have been losing um, fans, and I'm glad to see that the fans are coming back. So I want to congratulate the PLA. But secondly, we were contacted by the persons, the corporate, on the 10th of January, and we confirmed them. The PLA contact, contacted us on the 25th of March. That's the PFJL. Yes. So the, the place was booked for the Saturday from the 10th of January. Um, the other thing I would like to say is this is not unusual. If you watch MLS, there are at least five stadiums that use both, that plays both NFL and soccer. The Gillette Stadium, Bank of America Stadium, Mercy's Benz Stadium, Soldier Field and Newman Field. If you check, go online, you'll see that it has both markings for NFL and soccer. Um, granted, it's not something that we would love to do, but the fact of the matter is that the corporate people booked it long in advance for the PLA. Yeah. Are you so, with them. Are you so, well, so one of the questions being asked, Major Brown, is whether... Um, something different could have been used to mark um, that by the time the Premier League final started on Sunday, it would have disappeared. Was that an option? What were your options in that regard? I'm not so sure we had, we had op options. Um, we can only use paint because it's grass and in a sand, we can't use that much that we can do. Well, what did you use, first of all? Paint, white paint, that's what we used to mark the field. And then we covered it with green paint to try and get rid of it so it wouldn't be, it would not um, affect the players negatively. But the point I'm making is that internationally in the MSL, people play just like that, you know. Um, we had no choice because we had already committed to the corporate um, client and we wanted to accommodate the, the PL, Premier League. So. We have, we, we have to do what we have to do. Before I get into the, the what you have to do, under normal circumstances, um, how long would it take to remove the additional markings? Well, what you have to do is actually just keep water until it dissipates from the grass leaves. Um, we didn't have time because remember the event was Saturday. And how long does that usually take? Five days, five to six days. If if the Premier League um, the prof the Premier League um, had come to you on the tenth of January as opposed to when you pointed out, which was the twenty fifth of March, or had they come to you before the corporate entity, would you have done it differently and how yes, differently? We, we we normally give sports, uh, especially the Premier League, J trades. Those persons get priority. So if that come about the same time would have given them a priority. 
and I would, I would probably have asked the corporate people to, you know, give us four or five days. But they came so long after that, that we couldn't change it again. God, that's that made their plans and that done all that they can to. It's an all island, it's an all island event. People came from all over the island to participate. Um, and that's one of the things we try to say to our sports associations that, for instance, the J3 is the only one who does it. In the beginning of the year, we get a list of activities from January to June, J trees. So we and we actually pen those in. So if anybody asks us for those dates, we tell them no. And we're trying to get the other sporting association to do likewise. So that we can actually pen in their days. Um, even sometimes we have issues with JFF. Because um, sometimes they get their dates late. But all we tell them there's a window that FIFA gives them, let us have the window. Um, because for instance, we had to make sure that we have an event on this weekend. And we have to make sure there's no shot put being thrown because when you throw a shot put, it takes about four to five weeks to recover. So when we know these things down in advance, we can say when, when racers came to us, we said, you can have the event, but no shot put because we knew there's a FIFA match coming up. So, you know, if they would come to us early and give us the dates, then we could pencil them in and then we could work around them. Yeah, what would you say to those individuals who are saying this is the national stadium and there are certain things that should just not be done on the national stadium because it should be reserved for, I want to say, the highest level of sport and maybe if not reserved, but that you should always be ensuring in all cases that at the very highest level, um, the best accommodations are made um, both aesthetically and otherwise um, and and that there are some people who feel that maybe even these corporate events should not be held inside the national stadium well uh, you know there are different views of remember you know this stadium is a very expensive place to run the government covers most of the cost but they do not cover all we have to they cover the government covers six or a hundred percent of capital um expenditure and they cover 30 percent of operating expenses a whole lot we have to earn the rest and it's an old stadium we have a lot of maintenance um and the few major events to which you you are referring to could not cover those costs yeah so major desmond is it fair to say that of course you have to um allow these corporate events if you are to uh, accommodate for the missing amount of money that you need to uplift and you know keep the stadium running yes and not only these other events but you know for instance we had um a concert in there recently yes um we have to allow these because we have to earn i mean we can just put more hands to go to government every time so a lot of this and it's very expensive almost every event we have here we have leaking pipes toilets that are blocked up yeah. all those things that we have to have crews on on standby um to, to to keep the place going it's a 60 year old plus 65 year old stadium that needs some major refurbishing and do you feel the fact that this situation has come to hand and i think it's only being discussed because of the fact that it was broadcasted on international television and everybody saw the markings because of the broadcast right because normally if it's a smaller event um people may not notice and may not say anything do you think by you coming on this platform and of course outlining the fact that you know there's a calendar you would at least appreciate if you would get some of the events in advance to ensure that you block out um, these big, big events, do you think that this can bring some sort of solution to the problem at hand? It would definitely, if the association would give us dates. There are two things. I also say to them, what I would charge you for one match, if you come to me and give me six matches, I can give you a better deal. But there is, I'm getting this one match, one match, one match, usually at, at the last minute. And I really can't plan around that. Yeah. And, and when, when, when somebody comes and makes a booking, I can't turn it down hoping that I get something from football or, 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 or another sports. So now that it's on television and you have already outlined the problem, do you hope that, of course, the communication between all the bodies and your team will improve? I, I hope so. And in fact, it is improved with, with, with PLJ because... We're getting more matches. One of the things we're trying to promote is more of their first and second round matches at the Stadium East. Because 
the playing surfaces are one of the problems with why our football is not developing. And we have probably the two best, or among the two best services in Jamaica. And so we're trying to promote um, a partnership with them to play more of their matches at Stadium East. So the players can get a chance of using better surfaces. And so we're hoping that this will improve and that um, now that they have seen the results, good marketing, and the, 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 the fans came out to support, that next year we can sit down and have a, um, a better planning, a better planning so that um, persons can, you know, we won't, this won't happen again. Yeah. Because obviously if we, if we had the dates, we would not have allowed it to continue. Okay. Yeah, Major, here is one. Um, is there a way to strike a better balance? And I ask that question because I hear individuals saying, well, couldn't you have had the corporate event um, by the Stadium East field? By the way, I noticed that that corporate event displaced a Jamaica Athletics Administrative Association meet as well that actually was held at the Stadium East field on that Saturday evening before the Jamaica Premier League final, but that's been a pretty popular question. Is there a way to strike a better balance in situations like these? The, the thing is, you know, those JTRA's events, they, they attract very few, only the diehard enthusiasts come to those events. Not many people. You know that. So having that state of miss is no big thing. These people wanted the stadium. They booked the stadium from January. I, I, it's a business we are running here. The government has mandated us to make this as, we're not profitable, but to generate as much funding to go towards the maintenance and upkeep of the place. A national stadium will never be profitable. Let me explain. A lot of people say we'll, we'll never be profitable. We don't have a home team. We don't have 20 odd home games that collect or, or um, get prepaid at the beginning of the, the, the season. We don't have that. We don't. We, if you notice in the stadium, we don't have fixed advertising. In a, in any commercial stadium, you advertise and a lot get a lot of money from that, because every event organizer comes with their own sponsors. That's why you see no only only sponsor senior sports development foundation and they they help everybody. So nobody can argue against SDF. And and so a, a national stadiums are different kettle of fish. Run a national stadium a different kettle of fish and run a commercial stadium yeah and we, have to, we have to maximize to as i said we're not profitable and we'll never be profitable but we have a mandate to maximize as much revenue to reduce our burden on the government yeah so right now major brown you're saying you can't afford to turn anything down no i'm not saying that i'm saying that if we have the bookies like for instance the j3s yeah and people come and want to put an event near there or where it's going to affect it. We tell them no, find another date. Because usually when someone comes to book a date, they're more flexible, right? If once the date is settled then you have a problem, because once they start advertising to their clientele and their staff, it's difficult to change it. So when people come and they ask that our date and it's, it's going to clash with a J3A's event, we tell them no. We have the calendar for J3A's from in January, from January to July, we, we know exactly all the events for J3A's. And I wish more people do that. Yeah, we hear you loud and clear, Major Desmond Brown. As usual, appreciate you coming on and explaining um, what's happening. The one thing I'll say, every time there seems to be an issue with booking of the national stadium, it always comes back to one thing, money. Mm. Well, you know, <laughs> the stadium is not a cheap place to operate. The, for instance, a lot of people may or may not know the National Stadium football field is a sand-based field. There's no dirt out there. We have to water it every two days. 80% of what we put down there goes fertilizer, goes away. Even when you use the slow-release fertilizer, it's not a cheap. We have to cut it so that it doesn't, it doesn't grow too tall and thin. We have to cut it every two or three days. And we have to, the, the mowers that we use to cut that field cost thirty thousand US dollars. It's yeah. not a cheap operation. Major, one one quick one before we go. Can you give us a ballpark figure of how much it takes to run the facility um, uh, yearly? 
I think our annual budget is it 300, 200 and something million Jamaican to run the place. Wow. Mm. It's not cheap. It's not cheap. And you're saying the government covers only 30% of that? Yes. We have to earn the rest. Yeah. And, and about um, how much is it to rent the national stadium per day? The national stadium is about, I think about, I don't remember figures, but about 1.8 million mm -hmm. to rent the stadium. Per day? Per day. And that does not include instance, if you are utilizing lights? No, lights. In fact, one of the things we want to do, the lights that we have are very inefficient and the cost is high. In, you know, we have a refurbishing program in, in, in coming up. And one of the first we want to do is replace those lights with more efficient lights to make it more affordable to use the stadium. Unfortunately, whatever JPS charges us, we have to pass on those charges directly to the customer. But so we're hoping that we, when we get more efficient lights, we reduce the lights, light cost. And, 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 and I don't, of that 1.8, almost four to 400 to 500,000 is for cleaning. Mm. I'm sure you have seen the stadium after an event and see how much cleaning is required. You know, so it's not 1.8 in terms of surplus. Yeah. You have cleaning, maintenance. You have a lot of maintenance in the event. And, and unfortunately, unfortunately, football, when we have football games, we have the most damage. Yeah. Track and, track and field people tend to damage the stadium less. Is there a discount for national associations quickly? Yes, they, all of them get discounts. All sports, the national associations? No, no, all well, national associations get discounts for sporting events, yes. Okay. They don't, they don't pay the full rates. They, but they a, all, they a, a corporate entity wouldn't get any such no. discount? No. So a corporate entity would be paying more than, no. let's say, yeah. the associations? Yes, they do. They do. They do. We, we, we are mandated by government. But remember, you know, one of the main reasons that we have to keep the stadium going and keep that particular is that there are many of our athletes are now training locally. Yes. And they have to have proper surfaces to operate on. Yeah. So part of our mandate is to make sure that these facilities are available for them to train. And that's why we, we support the J3's um, development meets. Because yeah. if you don't have these development meets, for instance, the stadium, the, the athletes can't achieve their um, best performance. Yeah. Well, so. And Major, it looks like anytime soon you're going to need an upgrade to the track anyhow. So that's going to be more well, money they, coming. They have they have changed their arm. Um, they, 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 you know, we are, one, we are one of the few class one tracks in this hemisphere. Yes. In hemisphere. And they have changed it now. I think it used to be about eight, ten years. Every six years. You have to um, get reclassified. I think all reclassification comes up in two years. In two years. So two years to go to that. Major, as always, thank you very much for joining us. We have to run now. And uh, I would usually say we'll chat again soon, but I hope we're not chatting about anything like this next time and we'll have more positive news. Take care. Thank you very much. Major Desmond Brown, General Manager, Independence Park Limited, operators of the National Stadium Complex in Kingston, Jamaica. Well, you heard it from the man. Let's take a break. We'll be hearing from another man after. We'll be back.